Hello everyone. Let's review a few key points in the front suspension subsystem. Key part in the suspension are cradle, the frame in truck applications, knuckles, control arms, and tie rod. The suspension provides ride and handling characteristic of a vehicle. The suspension isolate the road vibrations, control hardness, and suppress shakes. It also makes the vehicle change driving direction in safe manners. The suspension in passenger vehicle has about 100 mm joust travel and then 100 mm rebound travel. It's good to have a longer travel for ride, but it's restricted to have about 100 mm by two bumpers. The ride springs support the sprung mass and the control vibration of the sprung mass. The spring rate is determined to keep the target ride frequency. Ride frequency in general is tuned between 1.0 to 1.5 Hz. This is true in heavy construction vehicles and military vehicles too. The suspension is soft in vertical direction, stiff in 4 aft direction, and the most stiff in cross car direction. The damper attenuates suspension vertical vibration once it happens. The damping force is a function of shock speed. More att attention is paid to low speed damping for ride control. Ride spring and the damper characteristics are often represented by wheel center equivalents. The level ratio concept is introduced to enable the wheel center equivalent. One remarkable feature of the front suspension is steering. The knuckle assembly is rotating about the kingpin axis. A stabilizer bar or anti-roll bar provides a resistance of suspension roll motion. It is mounted on the cradle using two rubber bushings. The end of the bar are attached to LCA or to knuckle through drop links. The step on knuckle attachment gives higher roll stiffness than the step bar LCA attachment using the same bar. Large step bars have a hollow cross section with 15% wall thickness. Suspension components are attached to each other by ball joint, bolting, and bushings. Outboard size has stiff attachment of ball joint or high stiffness bushings. Inboard attachments are compliant bushings. Bushings are elastomeric mostly, but hydro bushings are and hydro mounts are used for premium vehicles. The rear suspension has a subframe, which is frame in trucks, knuckle, control arms, and multi-links. Solid axle, the leaf spring are used for some truck application. A few small car has twist axle rear suspensions. In general, the rear suspension has a slightly longer travel than the front suspension. Rear spring parameters are spring rate, spring free length, or check low, similar as the front ride spring. The ride frequency for the rear suspension is tuned a little higher than the front suspension. The rear suspension is mostly not steerable. Some luxury vehicles have the steerable rear suspension, but max steer angle is substantially smaller than the front suspension. The rear step bar provides a softer roll stiffness than the front stabilizer bar. It could be attached to LCA or knuckle depending on a packaging option. Small size step bars have mostly solid cross section. Links and arms are attached to the knuckle using steep bushings and ball joint. Inboard attachment at the subframe are represented by bushings. The re rear subframe is isolated from the vehicle body using compliant mount while the front cradle is mostly bolted. It should be carefully reviewed if mount deflection might cause issues for packaging, load, and NVH performance. The powertrain generates the power to propel the vehicle. In vehicle dynamics perspective, 
It could be a simple rigid body with a heavy mass and very complicated inertia. In NVH perspective, the powertrain model is a source of noise and vibration, both from power generation and rigid body vibration. The model should comprehend the powertrain inertia carefully for powertrain vibration isolation. The mass, CG, and inertia metrics are available from a powertrain swing test. The principal axis of inertia matrix determine the mount locations and mount rates. Three or four powertrain mounts also tune and decoupled with the body vibration mode to isolate engine transmission vibration sources. Multibody dynamic software has limited capabilities of modeling engine and transmission details. One dimensional modeling software where the powertrain element can be co simulated with a full vehicle model to predict the powertrain related performances. One workaround to represent engine transmission physics in multi body dynamic software is to use a steady state engine torque map and torque converter curves and gear shifting maps. Internal combustion engines have low torque at low engine speed. On the other hand, electric motors in EVs have the max torque at low motor speed. As the vehicle market is moving to EVs, engineers should be ready for EV development and simulations. EV drive units are simpler than ICE. It has one speed gear train. It has much lower noise and vibration responses at low motor speed. The lower NVH responses raise a new issue in EV in a fashion that NVH sources used to mask by ice start to show up in EVs. The first target for ice mount designs is to suppress the engine idle vibration. Since the electric motor has no idling and the low frequency target is not clear for mount design, it is not a good idea to use a stiff mount because the EV drive unit would interact with the high frequency vehicle structure vibration mode. The electric motor control has capabilities of improving vehicle drive quality. One of them is driveline vibration control where the driveline subsystem should be modeled to represent the physics appropriately. EV drive unit has not been studied enough yet. One immediate need is to understand how vehicle performance is affected by quick torque changes in region brakes. The vehicle body in vehicle dynamics model has two layouts of the unibody structure for cars, SUVs, and CUVs, and the body and frame structure for trucks. As electric vehicles become popular, EV trucks also have unibody structures too. The rigid body representation of the vehicle body is mass, CG, and moment of inertia. Mass and CG in XY coordinate are easy to figure out. CG height and moment of inertia could be obtained from historical data. Electric vehicles with a battery installed in the floor have substantially lower CG height which would not be correlated to co traditional ICE vehicles. A flexible vehicle body is required for high fidelity analysis of durability event simulations and NVH analysis, even a few suspension compliance analysis. A trimmed body would work well for multi-body dynamics analysis if data is available. A body in white is okay to use too, but it is challenging to balance the mass discrepancy between the physical vehicle and the BIW model. Adding mass at critical location would serve as a mass damper, which significantly change NVH responses. The passenger and cargo mass are attached to passenger H point and cargo location in the trunk or luggage location. Sharp towers are subjected to high vertical forces to limit the suspension travel at potholes and rough road. They may have plastic deformation 
by the high tau load, it would be good to discuss how to define a reference frame to assess the suspension over travel. The driver and passengers have several interfaces with the vehicle. They are seat track, foot floor, and steering wheel, and the sound pressure at passenger's ear. They should be properly represented in the vehicle body model. The steering subsystem is to change the vehicle driving direction by steering wheel. Two type of steering systems are rack and pinion and pitman arm steering. Most passenger vehicles employ the rack and pinion steering system and heavy trucks utilize the pitman arm steering system. This slide covers the rack and pinion type steering only. The steering wheel has about one and a half revolutions from the straight position to the full left or full right turn. The rack travel per steering wheel revolution is C factor. This is a key parameter affecting overall steer ratio and steering effort. The maximum steer wheel angle and C factor should be designed for vehicle turn diameter, tire envelopes, and steer effort. The electric motor for electric power steering EPS system has a high gear ratio. Although the motor has a small inertia, the equivalent inertia incorporating the high gear ratio would add a significant rotational inertia to the steering system. The EPS system can control delicate steering performance issues. Steering suppliers offer black box model for EPS system or EPS modeling vehicle dynamics simulation. Vehicle performance associated with the steering wheel is acceleration as steering wheel. The model should be ready to report the acceleration at 3, 6, 9, and 12 o'clock position at the steering wheel. The table shows an example for a powertrain inertia matrix. Customers should be careful to use the inertia matrix since ANSYS motion has a different sign convention than the textbook convention. The product of inertia from a physical test is defined as the equation in the textbook convention. The sign of the product of inertia should be carefully reviewed and then used. Otherwise, the principal axis of the inertia matrix would be in the opposite direction. Powertrain mounts are one of the sophisticatedly designed components in the vehicle system. Mounts are designed to isolate the powertrain vibration during engine idle, start and stop, and drive away. Mount rates are tuned to maintain powertrain rigid body mode within the specified frequency range, for example, 7 to 20 Hz. The force versus deflection curves for mounts should be faithfully represented in the vehicle dynamics model to produce desired powertrain performance at several powertrain operating conditions. Multibody dynamics software has limited capabilities of modeling engine transmission details. One dimensional modeling software, AIMSIM for example, with a powertrain element can be co-simulated with a full vehicle model to predict the powertrain related performances. Driveline system delivers engine power to spindles. Half shaft connect the output shaft to spindles. Inboard and outboard joint of half shaft are commonly constant velocity joint with a tripod. Prop shaft transmit power from the engine to the rear axle. The tripod in a CV joint has reciprocating motion in lateral direction while a half shaft is rotating. The reciprocal motion with a joint friction generate a third order excitation in lateral direction. This is called generate axial force, GAF, Half shaft attached to the front suspension have suspension travels and steering articulation at the same time. 
This requires a higher articulation angle of the CB joints. Larger wheels travel and the steering angle may need a premium CV joint in this respect. Half shaft have a soft torsion or stiffness, a stiffness about 200 newton meter per degree for passenger vehicles. The engine inner shaft connected to wheels and tires by driveline system manifest a torsion or vibration with a natural frequency under 10 Hz. This vibration sometimes causes very interesting problems of torque ripple and power hop. GAF from CB joint might excite the powertrain in lateral direction at a speed with respect to the phase angle between the left hand side and right hand side CB joint. In phase GAFs from both sides cancel, cancel out the excitation, but out of phase. GAFs makes the worst lateral excitation to the powertrain. Driveline torque reversal in electric vehicles, especially in regen braking, crosses driveline lashes. Substantial torque reversal might cause issues with bushings and mount deflection from one travel stop to the other stop. The tip in and tip out bring a performance issue of a jerk and clunk noise. All external forces except the aerodynamic force are coming through tires. Tires interact with the road and generate the three forces at three moments. Tire and wheels, mass and inertia data are a key to unsprung vibration. A 20 inch aluminum wheel can easily weigh about 20 kg. A 20 inch tire can weigh up to 15 kg, thus tire and wheel mass should be represented appropriately in the model. Assist motion provides three tire models, Fiala tire which is complementary and then commercial tire of MF tire and F tire. The tire test week enables plotting tire force and moment characteristic for a tire file. Tire feeding tools are available to convert the tire test data to tire data deck. In a few extreme cases, tires are deflected to the rim, which may cause rim damage. This can happen in potholes, curb push-off, and curb impact. Tire forces are measured by wheel force transducer. Installation of wheel force transducer is not compatible to a production wheels and tires. It has an additional mass due to the instrumentation. Force measurement matches well with the simulation result, except for a few events under high unsprung acceleration where unsprung mass should be appropriately comprehended. 